The CC4D tools are a bunch of scripts for Cinema 4D to quickly add a control rig as well as a face rig to characters coming from Reillusion's character creator. Those tools are designed to only work with characters that have a bone hierarchy generated by character creator. Which means mainly characters with the type CC3+, actor scan or actor build, but also characters with the type humanoid as long as they have been rigged with the Accurig system inside of Character Creator, the standalone version of Accurig, or coming from the Actor Core library. The setup will not work on characters coming from different sources, like for example Mixamo, and were just characterized inside of Character Creator, because they will have a different bone hierarchy. So let's have a look at setting up a CC3 Plus character. The first thing to do before exporting the character as an FBX is to restore the bind pose. The CC4D tools need the character to be in a bind pose for the setup to work correctly. To export your character, go to File, Export, FBX and choose Cloth Character. For the export settings, choose Cinema 4D as your target tool preset and under FBX options, choose the option Mesh. As this is a CC3 Plus character, we can choose between the T pose and the A pose, which is the bind pose for this character, in the default pose tab. And again, the setup needs the character to be in its bind pose, so we go with the second option. When you open up the FBX in Cinema 4D, you can see the root bone of the character in the object manager, as well as all of the character's meshes. One little note here. It's important to keep the naming convention of Character Creator and to not rename any of the joints or any of the meshes at this point. Otherwise the setup may not work correctly. The first thing you may notice when you unfold your bone hierarchy is that all of the tip joints of each of the joint chains inside the hierarchy are actually null objects, which is not what we need. We need them to be joints. So the first step is to convert those null objects back into joints. Select the root joint and click the CC4D Convert Nulls to Joints icon. If everything worked correctly, you will get a message that all of the null objects have been converted successfully. To see a little bit better what actually happened, you can open up the console under Extensions. Here you can see that all of those null objects have been converted to joints, the weights those null objects might have had have also been transferred over to those joints and they've been added to their respective weight tags on the geometry. Before we can add the control rig now, we need to quickly run the CC4D optimized joints script over our bone hierarchy. It takes care that all of the joints are aligned correctly and also makes sure the arm, the leg and the finger joint chains will have a slight bend in the right direction so the IK systems of the control rig will work correctly. Again, select your root joint and click the CC4D Optimize Joints icon. You will get a message once the optimization is complete. As a last step of preparation before we can add the control rig to our character, we will get rid of all the unnecessary morph target geometry with the CC4D Remove Morph Targets tool. However, this step is totally optional. Your character will work with or without these extra morph target meshes. When you import a FBX from Character Creator into Cinema 4D, all the pose morphs of the character's meshes will be linked to some extra morph target geometry living in the scene as children of the corresponding mesh. Depending on the facial profile of your character and your character's geometry, this can lead to a heavy scene. Simply deleting these meshes from the scene is not really an option, as this would remove the pose morph completely. You would need to go into each pose morph tag and clear the morph target for each pose morph manually in edit mode. And again, depending on your character's facial profile and your character's meshes, this can be a very tedious work. 
The CC4D Remove Morph Targets tool will automate this process and removes all the morph targets for the selected meshes or all meshes in the scene where nothing is selected while keeping the pose morphs itself intact. After you click the Remove Morph Targets icon in the CC4D toolbar, you will see a small pop-up window giving you some information about the removal progress. When the process is done, you can see that all the extra meshes have been removed from the scene and the pose morphs will still work as expected. Now we can finally add the control rig to the scene by clicking the CC4D control rig icon and we are ready to run the control rig setup. Again, in the console you get some additional information, for example about the character type and if something did not work correctly you will also get some information or an error message here. The hierarchy has also been restructured and the rig elements have been stored on different layers for better organization. Now let's take a look at setting up some of the other character types. For the first example I've chosen the Party M character of the type Actor Scan from the Content Browser and Character Creator as this is also available as a free download through the Actor Core Library. The first thing to do before exporting the character as an FPX is again restoring its bind pose. You can already notice that the bind pose of this character with the type actor scan is different than the bind pose of a CC3 plus character. Go to File, Export, FPX and choose Cloth Character. For the export settings choose Cinema 4D as your target tool preset and choose the Mesh option under FPX options. If you open up the default pose tab you get the information that the export of a character with the type actor scan, actor build or humanoid is only possible in a T pose. Even though the bind pose of this character looks like a T pose, there can be slight differences between the pose character creator uses as the T pose and the actual bind pose of the character. So we need to choose another option. Under FBX options, choose the option Mesh in Motion. This allows us to export our character in its current pose. When you open up the FPX in Cinema 4D, you again see your root bone and your character's geometry in the Object Manager. The first step in the setup process is again checking the joint hierarchy for null objects and converting those null objects back into joints by clicking the CC4D Convert Nulls to Joints icon. If everything worked correctly, you will get a message that all null objects have successfully been converted. When you open up the console, you get some additional information. You can see that all of the null objects have been converted into joints and their weights have been transferred over. Let's now quickly run the CC4D Optimize Joints script over the joint hierarchy. Because we use the Mesh and Motion option when exporting the FBX from Character Creator, our joint hierarchy was exported with keyframes on it. In order to continue the optimization process and the control rig setup, we need to click OK in the prompt that is showing up to delete all animation tracks on our joint hierarchy. Now let's quickly clean up the pose morphs of our character with the Remove Morph Targets tool. As the last step, we can add the CC4D control rig to the scene and run the CC4D control rig setup.
Now let's have a look at a character that was rigged with the AccuRig system. For this example I have not used the AccuRig tool inside of Character Creator but rather the AccuRig standalone version to show you some differences in the export settings. You can download the app through the Actoco website. I have used one of the example character meshes that came with AccuRig. And here I am finished with the process of creating a skeleton for this character and binding the geometry to it. On the top right under preview motion you have several motions and poses you can apply to your character. As there is not really an option for restoring the bind pose like in character creator I am looking for a similar pose to what the character looked like in the beginning. Which was kind of an A pose. Now click on export. Choose export as FBX and choose Cinema 4D as the target application. When you open up the FBX in Cinema 4D you will see that the structure is similar to the one of a character exported from Character Creator. But you will also see, even though this character was in an A pose when we exported it, it actually was exported in a T pose. But restoring the bind pose of a character inside of Cinema 4D is pretty straightforward. But first let's check our joint hierarchy for null objects. And convert them back to joints with the CC4D convert nulls to joints tool. Let's have a quick look at the console and we can see that all of the null objects have been converted to joints and the weights have been transferred over to those new joints. To restore the bind pose of the character just select one of the weight tags on the character's geometry and in the attributes tab click the reset bind pose button. Before we can apply the control rig to our character, we need to optimize our joint hierarchy with the CC4D Optimize Joints tool. It seems the script detected some keyframes on some of the joints, but in order to continue the optimization process and the control rig setup, we need to click OK in the prompt that is showing up to make sure all animation tracks on the joint hierarchy get deleted. On this character we can see in the console after the optimization that the position of the lower leg joints has been adjusted so the IK systems of the control rig can work correctly. As a last step of preparation let's quickly clean up our character's pose morph tags with the CC4D remove morph targets tool. And finally we can add the control rig to the scene and run the CC4D control rig setup. 